Hi everyone, welcome back to the studio. We're painting on rows 29 and now, so two more, two more left, and it's a, a real good practice. Now, just a couple of things that I want to mention to you, because I read all your comments and everything, um, you know, as I'm going filming, and if there's something with the problems or something like that, if you've asked questions and stuff, I do like to address that. Um, but one thing that's very important, and I'm going to talk to you very seriously here as a teacher and as a friend, and that is never insult your work. Okay, you now I have some people on some of the forums and stuff on Facebook that go, well, mine turned out kind of ugly. Don't ever say that. There's no reason for that to be said to be said that. You're all learning something. Okay, we all learn, and we all, you know, we all make mistakes, and we all paint stuff that isn't too wonderful. I always say, if you paint something that isn't too wonderful, give it to a relative that you don't like. That's a good, really good way to get rid of it. But you, we all do that, and that's just all part of learning. But if you insult your work, if you say, "Oh, mine's ugly," or "Mine's at this," or you know, "Mine doesn't look right," and you know. What you do is you put a mental block right here inside your brain and you cannot get over that. Now that's what my mentor and my teacher told me 40 years ago when I started painting, when I started to learn how to paint. And I wasn't all that great, but I was determined I was gonna do it. And uh, he told me, he said, you know, you put that, you say those kinds of things and you will never be able to do it because it puts a mental block into your mind and every time you pick up the brush, you're gonna remember your failure as opposed to having the drive and the determination to learn it and do it. Anybody can do it, okay? So I'm, that's something that those that have taken classes from me for 20 years, and you're, you're, you're out there, I know, you know I give this lecture to a lot of my classes. I always say, don't ever insult your work at any time. That's not what artists do. What we do is we're constantly learning and educating. And yes, we have failures, but we don't ever let anybody know that they're failures. We don't need to, and, but we have the drive and determination to succeed, okay? That's the very best thing. So that's my one little piece of advice, because I paint all different kinds of things, and is never insult your work. There's no need for that, okay? Because we're all learning. We're all learning. All right, let's get back. We've got two more roses to do here. I want to paint with a little more paint, a little more texture, a little more contrast stuff. I have my board. My colors are all out here. I haven't used black for a while, so I didn't put it out this time. But my Hansa yellow, yellow oxide, burnt sienna, naphtha red light, pine green, the thalo blue, the uh, cornacridone violet, the red violet, and my white. I'm going to take my three-quarter inch brush. I'm going to put down some extender here. And uh, let's go into... A nice, I'm going to tone this down, burnt sienna, a little bit of green, okay? And I'm going to put in a nice contrasting color. I'm going to go uh, for some roses here that will have a little more power and a little more contrast. I, um, I find, especially like with small painting, there's, there's a rule in color theory called dis the law of disproportionate color. That as an objects get larger the area or the, the color, the intensity and color of it. Now here's a little yellow oxide. Let's put a little bit of that in there too. Um, but the area and the color that you use it gets, gets uh, uh, more toned. And reverse is that the smaller the, smaller the uh, uh, color or smaller the object, the more intense and more powerful and more contrast that particular uh, item can can have. And so I used to teach a lot of interior design. That was one of my fortes for years, teaching interior design, putting paintings inside of big uh, hotels and stuff like that and how we did all that. And we always said that any room, any large room and everything can support a, a, a painting that has a, a lot of contrast if it's smaller. The, the larger it gets, then you have to be a little bit more careful. That's called the law of disproportionate color. Um, and there's a lot of things about that. I teach that in color theory. But So here I have a little bit of yellow oxide, some burnt sienna, tone burnt sienna down, just really some nice colors here. Let's go with some kind of pink rose here. I love the uh, I love painting the pink roses, pink to white roses. A little bit of red, naphthol red light, a little bit of quinacridone, some white, 
uh, here. Let's put this down right down in here. That'll be pretty. We'll, we'll, we'll toss some yellows and stuff like that in there as well. But uh, let's do this first. Let's set one facing down this way, a little different. Maybe a little bud or something coming off here, off of this side here. Remember, we're practicing. These are the painted simply techniques. We're practicing them. We're practicing them. We're not, I'm not constantly teaching you new roses. I'm just showing you different examples of the, the way in which we do roses. So now I've got my shape of my design. I can come in here, add a little contrast. Um, I can take a little red, let's take a little red violet and a little naphthol, excuse me, a little quinacridone violet, the two violets together. We'll set the gaze of the rose, come down about a third of the way, set the nice big dark, Come here, lift the pressure on your brush, come up and around, small movements here. You don't wanna make it all smooth, so leave these little brush marks and movements. That creates the roundness of the flower. Let's pick up a little bit more, go up about a third of the way right in here, and set the bottom shadow, cool shadow color of the rose right in here, soften out the edge. You could also use your finger to soften out the edge there. But remember, it's always working in the bowl shape here. Okay, it's always working in the bowl shape. And let's, a little rosebud is the oval, so let's just set a little oval, maybe a little shadow here, like that. You know, in good botanical paintings, you know, and um, Pierre Rodote, who was the the uh, uh, French painter, who was the the uh, really the botanical painter for in the gardens of uh, um, out in Louis the Fourteenth. And the Palace of Versailles. I went there, I've been there a couple of times, went in, studied the works and the paintings and stuff at the Palace of Versailles over in Paris. And uh, Rodote was the uh, was the botanical painter for Marie Antoinette. And he is, oh, and, and he set really the foundation for a lot of flower painters. So what we do, and he always said that you should have the adult, a juvenile, and the bud. Um, into a good botanical painting. Of course, they also included the stem and the root and stuff. But, uh, And I've always thought about that when I put together compositions, put it in a bud, a more of a juvenile and more of an adult rose into that. And uh, I, I enjoy those kinds of compositions that have not just all adult roses. Let's put a little yellow into this one, maybe just a touch into this one. We won't put it into the bud. So we have an increasing yellow as the... As the uh, rose ages here a bit. We'll put in a little yellow. Let's go back with some light here. Okay, and we'll strike across. Pulling pulling down just a little bit. Remember you're pulling, don't go all the way down through that shadow. And then incorporate that up and around. You can push that up and around here until you start to get some of that motion that's gonna make the bowl. Let's just kind of close this off a bit here. And you can keep your rows open or closed, whatever you want to do. But remember, try new things. Try try new things. Let's uh, close this off over here just a bit. We'll leave that. And this is a, a little bit of movement back in here. I'll just touch that around a bit just to create some of the movement in there. Now, I probably just did a little too much in there, but that's okay. I'm a professional. I'll fix it. <laughs> I never worry about it. You know, it's just, yeah, yeah, sometimes we do a little too much. Now I'll come out here, do a reaching petal out. Don't go out too far. You know, remember we have a circle. Don't If you go out too far, then you'll distort the look of your rose. So you can go out a little farther, but don't go out too far. And then lift off right before you get to that to the bowl of the rose and let's widen that petal just a bit here like that. I'm going to put just a little extender. This is not to blend. This is, I'll show you other things about how I use extender to blend, but uh, I'm not a really a, a blending painter. I'm a, I'm a tone painter and I like to shear colors and add the movements like that. See that just looks all blended out here. I can pull that, I can pull that petal down just like that and that's going to take a little practice and a little confidence to get there to be able to take your finger and just do that, you know. And, uh, you know, that's the that's the thing is it takes practice and it takes confidence. Don't insult your work, though. You don't need to do that. 
No one needs to do that. Because we're all learning. Here we go. You know, and uh, if I'm coming over here now, what do I have to do over here? This is the cool side of the row, so I gotta cool my color down a little bit, right? We want to cool it down so we don't destroy the warm cool of the painting and drop the, the value of it down just a little bit. That's just a touch light. So let's get just a little more cool, tone that down just a bit. That's better. And it sits more into the shadow there. Grab a little moisture here. Grab a, put in a couple of petals here like this onto this side. Pull that down, see? Pull that in. That makes a nice, that's a pretty little rose out there like that. Now, this is, uh, this one does reach a little bit too far. And, you know, all I have to do to fix that is kick the rose over up to that side a little bit more by, with a smaller little petal out here. So if you get your rose slightly distorted, build towards that just a bit. And, uh, you know, build up the edge of that rose towards that just a bit and then that'll fix that we'll put a little bit more light right up over here and push it right into the bowl right in there like that so I'm building that up towards that edge there we'll build some right down in through here finish off that bottom of that bowl here I like to do that we'll put a few smaller petals into the back back here just push them out like those kind of see now that rose isn't quite so distorted there so if you get one petals too long or something out there just build your rose towards that edge now how do I know to do that because I made a lot of mis mistakes and I figured out ways to correct my roses as I paint them and that's part of the whole thing of what artists do we you know and the one thing that I always tell my students, and this is very important as I'm painting away here, I always tell them, you don't learn through doing something right. You learn through doing something wrong. You learn through your mistakes. And that was told to me, and it's very true. You know, you always will remember your mistakes, and that's how you learn through your mistakes. If you go through and paint everything right all the time, you don't really learn. And you, you, it's harder for you to create new ways of doing things because it's through the correction of errors that we learn new ways of doing things. And uh, that's very true. That was told to me years, many years, of 30 years ago. And I believe it. Very, very true. So let's put a little bit of light, a little edge, a little more texture, a little edge, and see how it lifts that little petal right off there like that. I can pick up that petal edging technique. A little bit of color right here. Let's drop a, a petal coming in. Let's not get that too light there, Dave. That will destroy our shadow. So we'll just push a little more color right there. Pull that in. If I want to give an idea of another little petal or just a little movement of color, that adds a lot. Let's drop in a little, a little petal right in here like that pull that right down into that thing. It makes a pretty little rose like that. I've got, um, you know, sometimes I'd say, oh, that petal's a little distorted. You want to round it out. But, you know, in nature, you get all kinds of petals going either all different kinds of ways. But I'll just round that out just a little bit. So you can go back and work on a, a petal underneath there with no problem. And let's build a little bit more texture, heavy lights, right up here into the front. Round that into the bowl. Let's just round this right up and into the, the feeling of the bowl there, just rounding that up and just rounding that shadow up. And if you can't get your finger in there, use your brush to go through like that. Do you want to close off any thing here? Close off a little bit more. Some of the petals up and around. That's up to you. You know, you can close that center off or do whatever you want. Maybe I want a little bit more of an angled one like that right there kind of closes that off if you feel that that center is you know well maybe that center's got a little too close maybe take another red like this and go back through and open it back up all of this motion this movement is really pretty for the rose let's put just a touch more cool color into that and see that's just all real pretty into the rose so sometimes I will just come back 
and just add motion or movement like this into the rows and I just I just love how it changes it you know and you can try so many different things okay quick bud oval shape we've said that before right many times let's put a little petal out here push that right into the bowl buds stay very easy and oval shaped here let's keep this very simplistic pushing that around doesn't need to have too much maybe just a little bit of light right across the front here let's take just a bit of our two violets maybe a touch of moisture could be water or extender and then just reset the center and it's that oval center that really makes the bud shape I think here push a little bit of that cool color out there like that that's enough to say that that's a bud you don't need that much here let's uh, come back to our our pinks here stuff here we'll pull across to the front we'll let this one be a little bit darker here a little bit darker not quite as much to it a little cool color onto the bottom side add some of your violets get the color cooler down here onto the bottom so you have the warm and the cool here down like that we'll put on a little bit warmer light petal here reaching out like that right into the bowl but this is going to be more of a juvenile so we won't have a whole bunch of petals like we do through here we'll just put a few of them out this one is just beginning to open up it's past the budge st stage it's starting to get some of its nice reaching petals but uh, it's not fully opened yet here so we'll just start that one down like that now I like that simple movement there into the center here you could add a little bit more just to break it up just touch it a little bit but always keep your your marks when you're working in here always keep them real small because that's the inside small the young petals of the rose those are the new forming petals of the rose and they're small and if you need to reset that that center dark which really makes the nice rose shape just do that and I'm just gonna whip out a little color here like that and just leave that see just casually leave that doesn't need to be that much okay let's um come in and get some of our pine green and burnt sienna my favorites we'll come in and do a little bit of negative painting here let's to help shape the outside of the rose let's put down the stem line here I like to do those put those stem lines in here just ideas of those some reason that's not one layout paints a little stiff here there we go and put a little bit of that movement out and around here you don't have to you don't have to uh, you know always just make leaves perfect leaves sometimes I like them just like that and uh, let's take a little soft even put a little bit of that you know pinks right into your greens are great ways to tone it down and it also creates a great great harmony between the rose and the leaves because you know it's the the leaf is carrying the colors of the rose so something to always remember it's it's if you want to get those nice dusty looking grayed leaves and stuff using the pinks from your rose if you have if you do have a rose that has pinks in it is a great way to get some of that now we could brighten a little bit of those just a little touch of those and around a few little colors here just push those around leave it loose remember it's all about uh, it's not a painting of leaves it's a painting of roses the leaves are there it's the, the accent so but uh, let's do a couple of lighter yellow ones here yellow green ones so take some Hansa some pine green right into my kind of grade version of it here so I'll get a little bit of harmony there and let's put in a, a larger lighter one maybe a larger lighter one pulling back down this way two or three strokes to fill them in blur them out a bit 
here let's get a little bit more dark over on this side here like that coming off of that stem there you could you know you can do the secondary lights you know which is I like to envision where that vein line is and just pull in just a bit and that puts a secondary light to that leaf all depends you know on the type of technique or what it is that you're painting I don't always do it but because I like to have a lot of variety but I do know it in you know those of you that have painted like uh, Franz Mortemans and stuff like that you realize that's he did that a lot to his leaves and I do like it putting this, this dividing the leaf like in half between the light and shadow side and putting that in it does work very well well let's uh, just put in a bit more green right in here maybe a second another one right in here like this and just kind of blur that out a bit just a bit of color doesn't have to be and you know before I've put in a lot of, of um, you know um, burnt sienna type shaped leaves and stuff like that down here you can do that I'm just gonna add a few more little lines here of some uh, burnt sienna kick that around a bit a little bit more dark maybe a little cooler pine green into that just kick up a little more contrast here in uh, into this center area here a little more color movement right in like that kick in a little more contrast right in there that's kind of nice it's kind of a pretty little pretty little painting I'll drop a bit of that right in here just push that around I like to push and just leave that little blurry stuff that happens. Very, very contemporary. Nice contemporary look for something like that. You know, and uh, then I always go back, look at my, I always call her the queen. She rules the composition. Do I want to have a, any more or, you know, do I want to maybe put just a touch more, maybe a bit of yellow, lots of yellow in there. Nice, bright, light heavy textured stroke right into the very front that really brings that forward maybe the edge of a petal here like that that just really brings that uh, forward don't lose the bowl shadow here don't lose that bowl shadow but you know I'm, I'm, I'm a big fanatic of just coming back in and hitting a little bit of that texture it dries down especially with acrylics you know, acrylics lose over half their volume in the drying process, so, you know, I don't, I, uh, so I, I try to get it, quite a bit of it on there, because I know a lot of it's going to disappear. We'll reset that shadow right there again, and I like that. that I like those little marks like that, too. And that's what I call the little pettit marks that just came off of a dirty finger, you know, so I like that kind of stuff. Just reshape this just a bit. One or two more little touches here. We shape the the rose just a touch more here. You can do anything that you want to have that. As long as you have your center and your bowl, you can restate a darker bowl shadow there if you want. If I have that much light up on that front one there, I could put just a touch, not quite as light, but a touch more right up in here. To grab just a bit more interest onto to that rose there maybe just a bit more of the edge right here pulling across like that and that's enough that's kind of a, a pretty pretty way you could I could lighten the leaves a little bit more if I wanted to touch more contrast but I do like this background working through there but if you wanted to touch more contrast in the front leaves that's up to you you know, it's it's your call, your painting, but I could put a, a little bit more light contrast right up in here and just blur that out a bit like that. Maybe a little bit darker, different green. Pop this, this leaf back out again one more time. And it just, you know, it, it, it's just creating a little bit different 
<clears throat> excuse me, a little bit different look. There you go. That's kind of a nice one. A little different. Build those, uh, build those colors up and stuff. Fun. These are all what I call the painted simply techniques for doing the roses. There's other ones. Um, you know, I know some of you have written me and asked me what's the roses in the in the uh, vase that I paint back there onto the canvas. Uh, that's a totally different, totally, completely different type of rose painting, ones with the curled edges and all that kind of stuff. Um, study from Franz Mortemans, who was a Victorian-era master uh, floral painter. And uh, we do a lot of studying of, of his work and his techniques. Uh, he was an oil painter, but we do it all in acrylics, and so we study those. I, I study a lot of those. I've done several of those in some of my online classes and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of ways to paint roses. This is a, a real fun... You know, when I look at uh, painting roses, and I'm a professional artist, when I look at them, painting these types of roses are the ones that, for me as a selling artist, sell the best. You know, I can put 8, 12 hours into a canvas like that, and I can sit down and paint six of these things and sell them for a lot more than I could sell the canvas, you know, with them all combined together. Painting the quick and, and fun roses like this are great ways to start your career as a selling artist, those of you that want to sell, because, you know, they make a, it, it makes a pretty, it makes a pretty painting. Um, and they frame up, you know, so well. And you can sell it relatively inexpensive. And the people who have a nice a nice painting that they can put anywhere in their home. And you did it quite quickly, okay? So they're a great way to start. Lots of different ways to do it. Lots of different ways to do it. All right. Okay. We have one more. I'll see you over on rose number 30.